I've had fires threaten me uh, most years. I've lived in Valencia Creek since I was three years old. Going through that so many times, you realise what's more important than other things. So we pack up all our photos and our family videos every year, pretty much. You can uh, help yourself by knowing where the fire is, listen to the radio, keep in contact with uh, all your friends and um, just make sure you're wearing the right clothing. Lots of teenagers just feel they can't do anything, they feel really helpless, like I did. Because um, you can't really fight a flood, all you can really do is prepare for it and then clean up afterwards. You can support people and just comfort them and try and talk them through it. Comfort is a big thing, no one wants to be left alone in that sort of thing. Welcome to Teenagers and Emergencies. I'm David Montague, a teacher at Mafra Secondary College, also a CFA and SES volunteer. Teenagers and Emergencies was initiated and written by four Year 9 students following the fires and floods which involved the Mafra and district communities in 2006-07. It provides information for teenagers to enable them to prepare and respond for emergency events such as fires and floods. As part of the project, emergency expos were held at the secondary college and students in years 7, 8 and 9 undertook instruction in fire and flood scenarios. Tim, Jess, Amy, Sam and I will cover why they wrote the booklet, how they became involved in the project, how it made a difference and how to create your own project and link in with other resources. Four MAFRA secondary college students have launched a booklet aimed at helping teenagers cope in fire and flood situations. The students drew on their first-hand experience as well as a survey of 130 local teenagers to gain information for the publication. Going through drills including sandbagging and first aid, more than 100 MAFRA secondary year 9 students had some hands-on experience dealing with emergency situations. We've just got all these stations around split into half, fires and floods, and all these different stuff that we can do, like sandbagging and the smokehouse. We wanted to educate the teenage community in our area about the floods and fires, so we devised a pamphlet which was free to anyone who wanted it. So we would be dispersing this through schools and community groups. We sent it off to the SES and CFA, which they corrected it and added their own information in. We just called them up and told them what it was about and they seemed really interested because there's not many things out for teenagers to do with fires and floods. It all started out with a simple idea from we want to go to the Alpine School to another simple idea. How do we write actions for young people to enable them to cope with emergencies and it grew and grew. The student surveys informed the project there was little available information for teenagers and young people who wanted to know how do I entertain young brothers and sisters in an emergency? How do I start a fire pump? And where do I put the animals when we're under threat of fire or flood? And much, much more. There were several aspects to this project. Gathering information, resources and skills through a survey, a pine school, They also researched and wrote and put. They organised an emergency services expo. They celebrated with a launch for 70 guests. As most of you would already know, Teenagers in Emergency had a learning fun day at Macro Secondary College yesterday at 12.45 to 3.15. We had 158 Year 9 students attend on the day. The fun day was about teenagers learning how to do the right thing in a fire and flood or situation. We had lots of volunteer helpers like our parents, teachers, SES, DSC and CFA. But if it wasn't for them, we wouldn't, the day would not have been as success as it was. These people have successfully worked in a small team and completed the Teenagers in Emergency Community Learning Project that help create opportunities for teenagers to safely help and support their families during times of emergency such as fire and flood. The competencies developed that we saw, collecting and analysing information, communicating ideas and information, planning and organising activities, working with others and in teams, problem solving, 
the use of a range of technology. You see, we sometimes fail as adults to understand what abilities our young people actually do have, and we probably set limits on them ourselves, which don't really um, reflect on the abilities they've got. We look back to our history of what some young people have achieved, and then again tonight we've seen what poor young people from Africa have managed to achieve. I don't think we should be setting those, those tight boundaries on the, on, the, on the young people. It's up to us to encourage them to explore and to see what talents they have and, and to aspire to achieve great things. And I think what you've done, today, done over the last 12 months and culminating here tonight is a great thing. It really is an achievement you should be proud of. I'm proud to be here as, as a member of the same community. So let me uh, officially launch the Teenage in Emergency and we'll hide the champagne around the back. And we'll have <laughs> The Emergency Services Activity Day the activities stemmed from the student surveys and included starting and operating a fire pump, choosing clothes to protect you from a bushfire, crawling low and guiding elderly residents out of a smoke-filled building, rake hoeing a mineral earth trail, Choosing items from a survival kit for the home or car. Taking care of pets in emergencies. Sandbagging. How to block a toilet and create a sandbag wall. Creating a survival kit for flood. Putting batteries into a portable radio and finding the ABC station blindfolded. Practicing safe lifting techniques. Exploring basic first aid for fires and floods. Creating a personal emergency plan using a Word document template which was taken home. Putting in emergency contacts into their mobile phones, including ICE. The two keys to this project's success were the students choosing what they wanted to do. They identified that there was little information for teenagers on fires and floods. Planning, hard work, discipline and the interest and generosity of many people. So this is not a one size fits all project to be replicated exactly in other settings. Students interests and resources will be different in every town and suburb. There are many springboards for a project like Teenagers and Emergencies. Reading an excerpt from Bushfires by Elizabeth Mellor or the Bushfires Burnt My Dunny Down by Tracy McGuire, Alan and Unwin, 2004. Visiting the local emergency services. Creating a survey to find out what young people know and want to know about emergency and disaster planning, prevention and response. Doing a check of the school's emergency management plan. Just having a conversation about who's responsible for safety. To really engage young people, we need to work with them to discover what they know and what they want. So let's ask them. When we know what they need, then it's up to us to support them in moving on to projects that they identify. For example, running an emergency services expo that's activity based, or creating a new way to encourage their friends to know what to do and what not to do in the event of an emergency such as a fire or flood. Teenagers are just young adults, um, so we can just do as many things as the adults can. Um, it's just that they've had more life experiences than us. So we're completely capable of doing anything they really want us to as long as they show us how to do it. I do feel a lot safer knowing I can do this and I know how to do it properly and efficiently. The booklet is a guide to help you before, during and after the fires and floods. We hope that the booklet that we made will help teenagers keep themselves and their families safe.